From its inception, Gran Turismo has always pushed the envelope for each new console. With the reveal of Gran Turismo 7 at Sony's recent PlayStation 5 event though, we have an exclusive that appears to live up to that reputation. Both 4K resolution and 60fps are on display in the trailer, alongside taxing ray traced reflections. And yet despite the technical ambition, it's a true classic circuit that's used to demonstrate it all, Trial Mountain. After its absence in Gran Turismo Sport on PS4, Trial Mountain's return shows the huge strides developer Polyphony Digital has taken, not just in comparison to its last appearance with Gran Turismo 6 on PS3, but going all the way back to the original PlayStation game 23 years ago. Every numbered entry features this track, it charts a clear path of technical evolution for the series, and so today, it's remarkable to see how far we've come in seven entries. The question then, how exactly did we go from this to this? Much was shown in the trailer. A new simulation mode features heavily, but Trial Mountain's return is significant for many reasons. It's a complete ground up reworking of a series staple. Given it missed the PS4 generation entirely, direct comparisons with sport are limited to just the vehicle. So let's take a quick peek at that side by side first. The route is taken by Mazda RX Vision GT3, which is already added to sports dealerships. In theory, most cars could transfer over in a similar manner. The design of the Mazda makes the jump from GT Sport more or less as is. Much of the internal material work, the chair fabric, the rubberized texture on the wheel, LEDs, and even that rear view screen are matched. Lighting conditions differ, of course, and ray tracing factors into the latest game, but the design itself is close. Still, Gran Turismo 7's rendering has an advantage. We're getting a native 3840x2160 image, in the trailer at least, rather than PS4 Pro's 1800p target, which, if you'll remember, use checkerboarding to get there. In other words, the PS5's power boost affords the game greater clarity all round. The visual jump is clear, and that also goes for the ray tracing. An overview of the garage reveals a huge focus on ray traced reflections. Chrome materials and even opaque window surfaces reflect the environment with more nuance than we've ever seen on console. The vehicles even reflect their own details as we pan around that polished chassis. This is the real deal. The caveat, as Alex Batali's breakdown of the PS5 conference points out, is that these reflected elements run at a lowered resolution, of what appears to be 1080p in this trailer. It ends up giving portions of the screen an aliased look, within an overall higher res picture, with almost checkerboard-esque artifacts. Still, it's a huge leap over the screen space reflections of sport, where artifacts could creep in. This is just one example of how PS5 can leverage a form of ray tracing, while keeping 4K and 60fps, and it really impresses. There are myriad other ways PS5's power could be used. Indeed, the developer has already shown off 8K and 120fps footage of an enhanced sport build back at the Inter B 2018 event. Today though, this Gran Turismo 7 trailer runs at just 60fps without skipping a beat, but doubling that refresh to potentially 120 has been noted by Polyphony as a higher priority than boosting the resolution. Whichever road it eventually takes, the trailer is still a showcase in its own right. Everything presented here is, after all, a work in progress, and there's no release date for the game itself. For now, we have Trial Mountain presented at 4K 60fps, more than enough to dig our teeth into for a trip down memory lane. Our first destination, then, is the original Gran Turismo as released on PlayStation back in 1997. This is where it started, giving original tracks like Trial Mountain, High Speed Ring, and Deep Forest Raceway their debut. Now this is running at 240p captured on PS2 via an OSSC, while the menu switched to 480 interlaced. Given Polygonal 3D was still in its relative infancy, the target was rightly set at 30fps too, though with some drops. That being said, a high res 60fps mode is also bundled in here, limiting play to just one car and for nighttime races only. It's still a blast to play even at 30fps though, but there's no question it's a product of its era. 
textures were pixelated and unfiltered, and PS1 lacked the perspective correction to prevent a warping artifact, typical in most of its 3D games. And yet, it still shone as one of the most technically pioneering games of its generation. Cars looked and handled in a believable manner for the time. Their surfaces had a faux reflection effect. Poppin wasn't as bad as most of its contemporaries. While an issue far into the distance of the final stretch, Polyphony created a sense of a believable, consistent environment with few visible limits. Trial Mountain is no doubt a showcase for the original game's tech. A lengthy tunnel along its back straight let players hit incredible speeds without incurring a performance hit or revealing too much pop in. It's a simple repeated structure that gives way to a stretch of overhanging trees, a beautiful crescent of green. The game's final chicane is also a landmark. Players could thread the needle here without feathering the brakes given just the right timing, again encouraging high speeds. Everything here translated to its 1999 sequel as well, Gran Turismo 2, with only a few minor tweaks. In general, Gran Turismo 2 was a bigger game in scope, more cars, more tracks, and vehicles had slightly more stable handling. But for a true technical evolution of Trial Mountain, we'd have to wait for a new generation. In perhaps the series' most radical technical push, Gran Turismo 3 arrived in 2001 to help usher in a new generation. The PS2's GPU, known as the Graphics Synthesizer, was known for its high fill rate, and Polyphony really pressed a huge advantage with it. This time, it meant the team could push for 480 interlaced gameplay in widescreen, at 60 frames per second. Not only that, but comparisons of Trial Mountain show pretty much every aspect of its visuals were touched upon. Textures were replaced across the board, new brick materials lined its tunnels, while a baked-in light shaft effect flickers through the trees on that back straight. Cars too evolved not just in their handling, but also visually. Their number may have been reduced from the 650 available in the second game, down to 180 in GT3, but with a focus on quality rendering instead, with an entirely reworked handling model too. As the first PS2 project for the team, Gran Turismo 3 represents such an advance. Draw distances were vastly improved over the PS1 versions, which could pop in geometry more clearly at points. Transparent elements like trees were also more liberally planted across the circuit's edges too, and all round, the stage looks almost unrecognisable at points. The core layout, it must be said, the framework of the circuit's every incline and curve, is a match for the first two PS1 games, but the new textures laid over it gave it a suitably rockier look, while shadows became more diffused, smoother. It'd only be three years, however, before we'd see the very same hardware push for a new aesthetic entirely. A more grounded, natural take on this same track appeared in Gran Turismo 4. Again, this appeared with completely redesigned texture maps and vastly improved lighting. This time, the team at Polyphony landed on something of a definitive take of Trial Mountain that would endure for future games. In comparison then, Gran Turismo 4 redrew everything all over. Chunks of geometry are created from scratch. Every tunnel, rocky outcrop and bridge featured a new polygonal mesh decorated with, again, new higher resolution texturing. It gave a less colour saturated look than Gran Turismo 3, but one that does come closer to a supposed sense of realism. Even those lovely light shafts were dialed back a bit between those rows of trees, but the result does look more natural in the end. Despite being a fictional spot, the colour grading, tree designs flanking the track, and materials fall much closer to its inspiration in the Sierra Nevada range. Not only that, Gran Turismo 4 broached new technical ground again by presenting all of this with a 480 progressive mode, or even a 1080 interlaced option, supposing you have the NTSC version of the game. It represented the series pinnacle, and there was no telling at this point we'd have to wait a full six years to see the next true numbered sequel. Gran Turismo 5 landed in 2010 and of course brought with it its own take on Trial Mountain. The rendering techniques changed with the hardware shift to PlayStation 3. We had a 1280x720 mode using 4 times MSAA, or alternatively, with 1080p output selected, a 1280x1080 mode with 2 times quincunx anti-aliasing. That 720p mode, it turned out, proved sharpest. Either way, in terms of clarity, 
it's in another lead to the rather noisy output over PS2's components. It was sadly at this point that the series lock on 60fps playback began to slip. The PS3's GPU, the RSX, could struggle with its limited 256MB of allocated RAM, especially faced with transparencies, with drops under 60fps as a result and screen tear. Its take on Trial Mountain, fundamentally though, uses the Gran Turismo 4 template. It's bolstered by improved textures, lighting and vastly updated car models with cockpit view. It also featured a move to cascading PCF shadows native to PS3, all of which created those thicker diffused outlines on the ground. The end result was a cleaner, more CG-like realisation of the same track. It's here the template stuck though. Even three years on, with Gran Turismo 6, we ended up with the same principal circuit design, with only a few tweaks to the roadside textures. But the overall package is very similar to the fifth game. Again, we had a shift in priorities in how it's all presented on a 1080p screen. Polyphony pushed the resolution to 1440x1080 on PS3, with a pass of MLAA that created a sharper presentation all round. It again saw plenty of moments with frame rate drops or screen tear when pushed with too many rival cars. Still, for Trial Mountain, there wasn't really much change this time, and little did we know that it'd be the last we'd see of it for another seven or more years. With Gran Turismo Sports' focus on real-life locations, the wait is on for Gran Turismo 7 to take us back full circle. All of which brings us back to today, with Gran Turismo 7's trailer marking a comeback for those much-loved original tracks. It's hard to overlook some key changes to this one, in comparison to GT6. For a start, there's the final chicane with its newly added barriers. It's likely to help discourage renegade online drivers bulldozing across the grass, but does sadly ruin visibility on approach. There's also a general lengthening to the circuit, thanks to a longer back straight. The rest comes down to the fine details though. The updated lighting model and physically based materials of sport with HDR all feature. The trackside is also now replete with more plants than was ever possible on PS3 with its limited memory bandwidth, and every point of geometry is completely re-sculpted. After so many iterations on the Gran Turismo 4 design, we finally have a full reworking. Add in the promise of ray trace reflections, there's a lot to look forward to here. Marrying a classic track with cutting edge tech is a masterstroke for this trailer. It only serves to underline the progress the series has made in its 23 years on the road. From its PlayStation debut through to incarnations on PS2 and then PS3, there's always been a clear advance in its technology. But equally, with each release comes a new set of expectations, a wish list. Gran Turismo 7's engine builds on the work started with Sport, certainly, but with PlayStation 5's beefier 10.28 teraflop spec, there's a demand to see that power used to see still newer features. Fully dynamic weather on every track, similar to Project Cars, would be high on there, as well as a more realistic damage model. It's great to see the return of a classic Gran Turismo career mode here, but better in-game handling, AI, and improved chase cameras are also key wants. Even so, the sampler shown on PS5 achieves what it sets out to do. The series has never looked better, and Trial Mountain uses its lineage as a great way to showcase those advances, from the move to 4K, the upgraded material design, and its ray traced implementation. All that remains now is a clear lock on that release date. We'll be back with more on Gran Turismo 7 down the line, but for now, if you did enjoy this trip down memory lane, feel free to like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell to get notifications as any new video lands. To get a high quality version of this video, check out our Patreon at digitalfoundry.net and to get in touch directly, just use Twitter. But from me for now, thanks for watching.